Hey, you're tuned in to Live at Five. And before we jump into today's guest, I just want to remind you that this show is only possible because of the generosity and support of amazing people like you. Continue to support us by subscribing to this YouTube channel, clicking the link to donations and merchandise in the bio below, and by spreading the word about our shows. Thanks again and enjoy. Welcome to Live at Five on this uh, Tuesday afternoon. I'm going to have to check the date. It is Tuesday, April 21st. Every day feels like Tuesday and Wednesday and Saturday. Um, but that's okay because luckily I have uh, my good friend and our producer, Darcy O'Connor, keeping me on track. How are you today, Darcy? I'm doing well on this uh, Thursday afternoon, Jack. Yes, it's definitely a Wednesday. Okay. So it, definitely. Okay. Yes. It's a Friday? <laughs> Yeah, so, so something like that. Um, you know how I keep we have we we have like certain meal days in the week. It's like I've gone back to third grade. So like so Tuesdays are Taco Tuesdays, of right? course, classic. And so Taco Tuesday, Taco Tuesdays. But it gets like to me, and I don't know what your school lunches were like in Australia, but Friday was always pizza, right? Right. Okay. Well, we just had kangaroo have... burgers every single day. <laughs> Did you have to? No, we we we, we, did, we don't have cafeteria. Yeah, we pack. We Australia is is a pack lunch culture. Wow. Yeah. So you brown bagged it. Uh, I had a little lunch box. Um, of course you did. Yeah. Was it a trunky? Did What's you a ride trunky? on it? <laughs> no. A trunky is like a little kid's suitcase that you can you can pull your oh, kid on. Oh right. No, I didn't have yeah. one of those. I had a. I had like a. It was like a, it was like a brown bag, but it wasn't a ba- like paper. It was a uh, like a cooler, but in in bag form. That was what wow. all the kids had at my school. I have to say, I mean, I you you could be scarred for life by the choices that your parents make to put in your lunchbox because. Yeah. If your food, you know, if you, you know, the kinds of things that I think are fun to eat now are the kinds of things that if my mom put them in my lunchbox, I would literally like hide them. <laughs> it's like, oh, you, you, you're eating, you're eating fruit. <laughs> yeah. Like, you mean like, why don't you just get some fruit snacks? They have fruit in them. Yeah. It's like, it's like, what, what, <laughs> it's like, where are the potato chips? I, I don't where understand. Where are the chips? Yeah. I mean, does your mom even like you? I mean, <laughs> a you know, sandwich. You oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, we didn't come here today to talk about bagged lunches and Australian kangaroo burgers. Um, if you're vegan, um, we're really sorry about that. Um, kangaroos are people too, <laughs> and we have a very special guest today. Uh, he's a guitarist, a promoter, a fluent speaker of Portuguese. Um, and just an all-around uh, awesome guy. Um, his name is Will Arnold Foster, but before we speak to him, we're going to jump into a little solo rendition of a Wes Montgomery tune uh, he recorded for us earlier today. Uh, this is Will Arnold Foster, and you're listening to Live at Five. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yo. Yo. <laughs> that was uh, Mikosa. Mikosa as Tukosa by Wes Montgomery. Or um, Wes Montgomery. Uh, isn't that right, Will? That is right. Will, Will's on the line. I'm on the line. Um, that is right. That's a one of the, it's like a little solo guitar piece that he recorded a few times. It's really great, actually. He did it, he maybe recorded it four, five times, and it's a bit different each time he recorded it. He'd kind of like take out sections or put new sections in. Um, some would be really long, uh, some would be really short. There's this great um, recording of him playing it live at Ronnie Scott's in the mid-60s. Um, really? He plays it there. Yeah, it's brilliant. He He's... He's a complete genius. And, and it's then, always solo. It's always solo. And for a long time, it was called unidentified solo guitar, um, which is a catch. And so you, just, so you just named it. I, I, I identified it for him. <laughs> <laughs> no, then he, I mean, he called it, he called it Mikosa for after that. I, think. I don't know the history of it, but it's just a lovely piece. And he'd play it with this really warm tremolo bit of it. I, I recorded it with as well. I mean, I say recorded, yeah. it was just recorded on my phone. But um, but you'd get in on these old Fender amps from the 60s, they'd have like a vibrato channel. And I've got- Oh, really? I didn't, amp, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay. And um, I love it. Yeah, and it's one of my favorites, of, from one of my favorites. And yeah. Well, it sounded, sounded just beautiful. And it's it's so cool. Thank you. you know, I, I didn't realize that that he recorded it a few different times, but it's so nice when- when an artist kind of comes back to a song throughout yeah, their totally. career. Yeah. And it, and, it, it, it helps you has, kind of, yeah. Well, I was going to say, but also kind of has flexibility in it. And, but it's like a, a tune of his that kind of changed and morphed over time. And I don't really know which versions were kind of like definitive version, or, but he, he'd kind of like take bits out, put, bats, put bits back in. And I really like that, that it was a kind of like, living breathing piece but he didn't he didn't just perform it like as a classical piece like you could write out on a piece of paper he'd kind of like improvise while he was playing or he'd kind of compose new bits for it and it's just lovely and i and i love him he's he's the king sounds like jazz to me Sounds and like uh, jazz to me. so so i wanted to talk to you about a few different things uh mm. today and and, you know, obviously it goes without saying that, you know, I love your guitar playing and that you, you know, you're, you're a fixture on the, the London scene as a performer, but you, you do a few other things as well in the, in the mm. music realm. Mm. And uh, one of those, uh, you know, recently is that you promote gigs at the Oxford yeah. in Kennish town. And mm. I just wanted to ask you how, how you feel, how long has that been going on and mm. how do you feel you've learned from kind of booking musicians yeah. and coordinating concerts yeah i mean well it, it's a night which has existed um for years and years and, and it was initially set up by the loop collective guys and then uh after the loop collective guys george crowley did an amazing job running it for years like seven years or something um all at the oxford in kentish town um and this is a pub which is also very very near to where i grew up like geographically, I kind of grew up near Kentish Town in Holloway and um, went to school very near the Oxford. And so it was really nice. Um, and, and anyway, the, the pub kept changing hands, kind of changing management. And then these, these guys came in and kind of, it came, Crowley's kind of era of looking after it came to an end and when the new management came in and then they got replaced by other people and they got replaced by other people and finally um about oh god 18 months ago or so um with david and tom two local kentish town doctors who hang out at smitty's a lot kind of well i think they initially got in touch with you guys asking if you were kind of would be interested in getting music going at the oxford again and then you kindly put them in touch with me because I still live locally. And it kind of went from there. So I guess about 18 months ago, it's been back up and running. But it really is a night that's been going. It's like a real fixture on, on, on the London jazz scene that's been going for years. Um, yeah, and you, you get different you, incarnations. 
you get loads of you know guests down from you know people from new york and you yeah get, uh you have like a dedicated following sometimes yeah. you have you know upwards of 50 people in there but yeah you know i and it's i think what, what's interesting to me is that you you know you you make the calls and you curate the mm. the kind of series and i mm. and i i just wonder if that's kind of been you know enlightening or enjoyable for yeah. you yeah oh totally i mean it's it's certainly taught me a lot of stuff i mean when i sort of kind of initially said yes to it i kind of realized that it would be uh, quite a lot of work and inevitably it kind of ended up being or is a bit more than that but it's all really enjoyable i mean and i wouldn't be doing it if i didn't enjoy it and i think i just wanted to kind of i think when you god and kind of not to sort of like be all holier than that but i think when you take something like that on you've kind of got a bit of a responsibility to a lot of people to kind of try and make it as good as you can um so that it's like you know because there's no point it's been so good in the past that i wanted to get it kind of you know really happening and it certainly taught me i mean god a bunch of stuff about what little i know about kind of marketing and ad advertising mm. that gig i learned from kind of trial and error through doing that um we've got an amazing um saxophonist Oshin who does our posters for us and you know and so I mean what specifically has it taught me I mean it's certainly stuff about curating live music and programming in terms of like you, you know just obvious things like you, you probably don't want like three piano trios back to back um, right right and then also stuff like I try and program it relatively broadly in that there are so many amazing kind of pockets of the just like Smithies of, of, of the London jazz scene and i don't want it to kind of be known for just being the place to hear like contemporary or straight ahead or fusion or whatever it may be i think kind of good music's the philosophy behind it really is that good music is good music you know interesting executed well kind of got uh, got interesting concepts behind it perhaps or you know it's good music's good music whether it's like somebody's originals project which may be very left field or whether it's like you know some amazing bebop musician or whatever i think that's kind of that's the main philosophy behind it is to just put on like program good and interesting music i mean i think if you do that for a long enough period of time and you have like a a good local audience to begin with then the thing will kind of grow because if you get a kind of if it's like a quality product people will tell their friends about it if it's a really good night out because you know there's so many things working in the oxford's favor the room's great it sounds great it's got a great piano it's got great beer downstairs the pub the people who work behind the bar are great you know everything about it is set up really nicely um and the ticket price isn't too expensive and we just kind of pay the we kind of guarantee a bit of a fee for the musicians and um top it up also from maybe what's in the in the in the bucket at the end of the night and it, it kind of just works well and if, if it's if it's good and it's all on the strength of the musicians who come and play which has been like kind of phenomenally high there's been some amazing special nights of music but if that's good then i think the audience will grow without there needing to be a kind of shtick or a gimmick yeah or you well know. i think yeah i think what you've what you've created down there is is really the the roots of a of a you know north london jazz scene and it's amazing mm. how when you when you plant that seed like you said in kind of fertile ground mm. you know there's an, a nice room with kind of a nice mm. ambiance yeah good good drinks and a nice place with yeah. great bands that you're bringing in yeah. you know the, the the public come together and it creates yeah. a community the, around the thing the ingredients are good i mean and this was i mean saying it again i mean it it, it would have taken a lot longer if it wasn't for kind of the amazing work that george in particular did with the night for years you know because it meant for example i mean he was so helpful when we were getting it going again in that you know there was immediately like a mailing list with a couple of hundred people on it right and so you then reach out to them and say right we're back on the music's carrying on you know as as it was monday night you know and then so you, you're kind of starting from a good place and then 
now there's a piano there so now you can book previously there wasn't we, we yeah. um yeah it's such I mean, a defining thing it's like that's when it that's when a night gets serious yeah it's like, do they do they have a piano yeah and it was, I, don't it was, I don't know if it's gonna last exactly yeah. no, and it was it was it was tom and david who um who i who i run the night with who are equally kind of um kind of important in 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 the venture who decided to they extremely generously bought a piano for, for the room just, yeah i mean i was great. it's amazing i mean and that was like a real to be honest at the beginning it slightly stressed me out because i thought jesus like we've got to get people in the room now because it would be so sad if they've spent this money on this piano you know and i'm yeah. booking it and the musicians playing are great and like it would be so sad if there's like nobody to hear it you know and it just kind of like fell on its face but um you know i've luckily it's been it's been nice and busy i've got loads of mates who still live in the area i'm always twisting yeah. their arms to come down or certainly <laughs> was at the beginning well i don't think I mean, you i don't just... think you have to twist many arms i mean no, every time no. i've been down to that place it's been it's been yeah. packed and i yeah I think and, and people nice. have people have been but, but the main thing is that uh, i mean if uh, i just i just love it if i'm there on a monday and the music's really happening which it always is and then the room's nice and busy it's just a great hang, you know, everyone, yeah, man. everyone seems, I mean, I don't want to speak on people's behalf, but everyone seems to enjoy it. I mean, in touch woods, long may it continue, I guess. Um, well, I, yeah, I, I totally agree. And I can't wait until you yeah, all uh, get to, to start putting on yes. gigs again. My um, God. Yeah. So I think that's a good, a good time to jump into some more music from Will. Uh, and this is with uh, another great, uh, saxophone player on the uh, London scene, Sam Brasher, and we have Dave Ingemels on drums and uh, Dario De Leche on bass. And this is a tune from Stan Getz called Hershey Bar. <laughs> Thank you. 
at five and will arnold foster uh who uh during that was telling us uh the story of the the gig that he actually uh entered a sweepstakes to be chosen for that gig and and it was his live stream to perform with sam brasher and uh i can't say that i blame him because uh sam is uh, is is a great well one of the one of my favorite sax players on the london scene and uh, an amazing guy now so you were telling me will that um and and this is for for the jazz fans out there um it, it was a very sad day a couple of days ago uh because lee Connitz, who's a a, mm. a hero of the alto saxophone and of jazz improvisation um and improvisation in general uh mm. passed away mm. uh at uh, i think 93 years old or 92 yeah, 92 um, 93 yeah yeah, and and Amazing. I know that he's a, a real hero to Sam. And you were saying that when you guys went to New York, uh, that that you actually met Konitz, right? Sam, Sam did, yeah. I mean, we were. I was just saying we we went on this great um, kind of nerdy jazz holiday ages ago now, like in 2014, and we were sharing this studio apartment, me and Sam, right, kind of right in the middle of where you wanted to be in Greenwich Village near Washington Square Park. And it was a brilliant trip. It was, I mean, it was a really small flat and there was like a bed on a, anyway, it was a small flat and like we were sharing between the bed and sleeping on a chair. And anyway, so one, Sam, some, somebody slept in the bathtub, somebody slept in Yeah, the... that sort of thing. <laughs> um, and yeah. then um, Sam, I can't remember who gave him Lee Connitz's number, but Sam somehow got Lee Connitz's phone number and I think it's like probably his landline and, and, and rang him up and um in order to kind of ask if he could like you know kind of 
had the honor of like you know having a lesson or going around to the flat it's amazing that you can just call somebody like that up you know i know i think you used to be able to you used to be able to just find their name in the phone book i know i know new york and i know i was i was watching this interview exactly i was watching this interview with um the great drummer joe farnsworth new yorker who was saying but like when he was a teenager you just opened the phone book and you'd like you'd look up just like you know like art taylor whoever you know like all these right, great drums right. you just ring them up and like you know and often they'd pick up the phone anyway sam did the same thing with lee connitz and i've never uh, sam was I'm, i mean he might uh dispute this but he was freaking out when he was ringing up <laughs> probably well, didn't probably didn't want him to answer the phone um anyway but he i can't remember if he did answer or if he left a voicemail but it eventually happened where he went around to his house and spent some time with lee i mean and i can't imagine i mean i've had the great pleasure to you know spend some time with some extraordinary um jazz musicians but i mean spending time with lee Connitz must have been particularly special i mean well God, yeah and i and i think we'd, we'd all We'd all have the the butterflies going in our stomach oh, yeah, on that totally. phone call for sure. Oh so. my god! Yeah. So so speaking of being in the company of great jazz musicians, I uh, I wanted to ask you about um, you know you you host the jam sessions down at Smitty's a lot, mm, mm. and 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 I think you know Darcy and I were talking about this earlier today. Jam sessions have been a fixture in jazz since mm. since its inception, really. Mm. You know, and it's a kind of it's the kind of initial forum for people to kind of uh, socialize musically. Yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, and it's a really crucial way to form bands and write music and, and totally. kind of just be uh, a community of people who are interested yeah. in the same thing. Yeah. Um, but it also has to be led with kind of great tact and great kind of finesse so that you're putting, you know, the right, singer with the right bass player yeah. or the oh they fell out two months ago so i won't put them on stage God, together yeah. or um or that person i can't put two people who can't keep time in the same band or yeah yeah that Only guy one always takes at one time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like that guy always takes you know 40 choruses too many yeah. so he can't go yeah. with and and yeah. i i'm always amazed with you know by the i've been down to a lot of the jam sessions that you've led down there and and you always lead them with kind of you know this great kind of delicate grace um, oh, and, I, and I was just wondering how you kind of got the idea to do that, or is it just kind of your personality, or how did you, uh, you know, I mean, how did you develop that skill? I think it's. I mean, I, I went to a lot of jams when I was, particularly when I was a teenager and at music college. So you kind of, or lots of them have kind of different feelings to them and different vibes. I remember I used to go down to the Ronnie's Late Show a lot when I was still at school, um, like secondary school with like Ruben Fox and Mark Kavuma and that lot and see how Mike Moemzo used to lead it and then go to the one at Charlie Wright's and there was one at Guildhall and you kind of see how all of these ones operate and and with the and you kind of take bits that you like from all of them I mean it, there's no great secret to it I think with the Smitty's one it's it's been good because all the musicians who've turned up have always been you know great musicians and cool people and they get it and it's been really civilized but i think mm. also if you you know you just got to tr treat people as you'd want to be treated i think and if you treat people with you know if if there's someone new who you haven't met before you go up and say hey and get to know them and introduce well, that's them just well. what I, that's exactly what i was going to ask you know if you, you know for people who are listening to this who who've never participated in a jazz yeah. jam session before just so yeah. you know how it works you go to a yeah. club you know, and there might be a jam session and they're usually a bunch of people that know each other very well. Yeah. And yeah. usually, usually you, either you don't know them or you do know them and, and you're not friends with them <laughs> for one reason or another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. kind of the operating party. And now, yeah. then the person who leads the jam is the person that you have to go up to and say, well, yeah. I'd really like to play. So, yeah. if, you know, you, you go up yeah. to all, all of the figures that you mentioned before going up to them would be a very intimidating. Yeah. You know, I mean, so I try and, I mean, I could do, I like all things I could do it better, but I just try and maybe if there's someone there who's maybe looking a bit kind of like sheepish in the corner, I think you may, I kind of have a responsibility to go up and say, Hey to them, because we're all there to learn whatever stage we're at, you know, and it's, it should be a kind of um, without kind of sounding too like new age and stuff. It should be a kind of like, 
kind environment it doesn't have to be like a nasty intimidating thing you know like mm. if you don't know the song that somebody calls it's okay just don't play it learn it and play it on the, play it the next time you know it's like no one's going to get mad and similarly if you know i i kind of try and maybe preempt somebody kind of wanting to play but maybe not being confident to play by going up to them and talking to them and sort of introducing myself if we haven't met or you know and i think it's kind of important to to kind of reach out a bit because otherwise it can get a little bit um cliquey or Absolutely. you know like yeah. even like when we do like a house we do like a open it up with a house trio set but i try and not make that too long you know like because nobody's there for that everybody's right, there to right. hang out and play and listen and so you know you only need to play a few tunes and then just get into it get stuck into it just get everybody everybody in the mood yeah yeah and get and 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 just talk to people and because there's i mean most of the night that's what i'm doing because i'm not playing you know we've we've also been lucky but they've always been it, there's been really good musicians showing up so i kind of as soon as the music starts i often don't have to not that i would but i don't have to worry about what it's going to sound like i can you just I can, go to go to go to honey bolton and just drink cocktails all night right or yeah exactly <laughs> and and sort get, of maybe, get the old-fashioned on drip you know yeah intravenous <laughs> um but just speak to speak to maybe slightly younger musicians who i haven't met before kind of find out what they're about and um but at the same time saying all of this i you also kind of want to be respectful of the musicians on stage and you don't want to be talking over them or talking too loudly but it's just mm. a little bit of it's and it's not something i would say that i do brilliantly well but it's just a little bit of i like would tact. i would say you do it i would say you do oh, it thanks. amazingly well um, and i can't wait until we get to uh, get stuck to, in do again. Them, to do them to do them again That'd so tell great. us about tell us about this um this this older is it a spiritual tune or tell us about this last tune that you sent us i mean to my great shame i mean i just know this kenny burrell recording of it um off this amazing record from the 60s i can't remember what it's, it's like kenny burrell with a big band and he is an extraordinary musician one of my absolute heroes um he's got a beautiful touch i think sometimes people slightly um not write him off but kind of put him in this hole of being like like a bluesy jazz guy and like but he's mm. like a he's and and whilst he is like really steeped in the blues um and he's an extraordinary blues guitarist i mean that's just like the tip of the iceberg he's got so much elegance and sophistication and nuance and um depth of touch and all of the things that draw you in as a listener that are really important sound and feel and all of that and this is just his arrangement of a kind of old spiritual um called were you there or like were you there when they crucified my lord and i guess it's an old hymn um and it to my uh, to my knowledge it wasn't one that had been recorded by jazz musicians before although maybe it had um and i just heard him play this and it's just like gorgeous and and i yeah. just love and it's so pure and simple and he doesn't kind of like crazily reharmonize it it just kind of speaks for itself it's just a song yeah it's just great. a song and this is i mean this is me playing it but really you should check out kenny playing it because well we're, we're gonna enjoy we're gonna enjoy will arnold foster playing were you there you're listening to live at five on this tuesday afternoon taco tuesday in fact and remember to subscribe to this channel and also to click the link in the description below to find out more about what we're doing. This is Were You There?
and we're back live at five. Will, that was beautiful. And uh, as you can see, Thank Will you. is is endorsed by Gibson. He made sure that the headstock <laughs> was right there in the video. Um, so please, Gibson, if you're if you're out there, just keep Show sending the love. free yeah, keep sending the free stuff his way. Um, I'm hungry, Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Gibson actually went went bankrupt last year, didn't they? Did they? Did oh, you hear no. about that? No, yeah, I didn't. They went but... they went bankrupt because they moved from anyway this is all guitar yeah. nerd stuff but yeah. they moved from you know they used to be made in kalamazoo michigan yeah orville gibson yeah. was the guy and, and he was making mandolins yeah and then the kind of amazing technological breakthrough is in the 20s and 30s when you have mm. lloyd lore who starts right. making yeah. guitars like mandolins yeah. and that's when you get the arch top shape yes. of the guitar yeah. um so anyway, they moved from Kalamazoo in like 80, I want to say 85. And that's when you have the heritage that starts out of the Kalamazoo factory. That's to right. Nashville. Yeah. So they, so they were out in Nashville and they basically blew a bunch of money. Apparently it's really, you know, unfortunate on, you know, kind of wasted. Mugs. It was the mugs that <laughs> yeah, did them in. So they, <laughs> they went bankrupt, but luckily they're still around. So, um, you know, so, but, so they, so they still exist, right? Yeah. They still exist. Yeah. So okay. don't worry. You're, you're, they can your endorsement still send check. me that, that check and that yeah. mug. That check and the check in mug will be there via your oh, door uh, thank any, God. any minute now. Um, so, <laughs> thank you, uh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I want to share with everybody our uh, record of the day. Well, maybe Ooh. Doris, can we show them, can we show them both records of the day? Can we show them the one from yesterday and the one from today? I'll get yesterday's loaded up, but do you want to talk about today's? So uh, today's, now what's the guy's name? I got to get it right. Okay. Today's <laughs> is something, you know, this is, we were just talking about our different streaming services and how, you know, it's, it's so, for me, I, I don't, I don't favor Spotify or Apple music or YouTube music or anything, but I just want to have the one that I can send people music on and they'll mm. send it back to me because you know, so much of the discovery of new music is the pleasure of getting to send it to a friend. You know, it's, mm. it's the, the, the satisfaction of being able to give a friend an LP and say, you know, mm. put this mm -hmm. on at home. Um, so anyway, you know, on Spotify, I get all these, you know, check this out, check this out. And I found this, this guy called Durando, who was uh, apparently a kind of a soul singer, soul and, 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 R&B singer on the San Francisco scene in the 70s and he made uh he made a few records that I I just put it on and and it's not our usual uh you know jazz flavor uh but it is just one of the funkiest things I've ever heard and and the the single is called Legs and I think it's here is it it's called Legs EP trust me it's it's like it's like James Brown level um well it's it's uh it it can it can uh it can Comparable. worship at the altar of James it James Brown. James. It'll it put hang. a smile on your dial, that's for sure. Put nice. a smile on your dial. There you go. And uh actually you might recognize Durando because Giles Peterson uh played one of his tracks or discovered him, you know, a couple of years ago. So he was kind of big on the on the UK scene, a little resurgence. Uh but we have a, another record of the day, which is actually a record of yesterday. <laughs> Uh, which is uh, <laughs> which is uh, more in in keeping with our usual sound, and it's uh, from our guest from Sunday, Kit Downs, and it's here. And Darcy, you really you really connected with this one, didn't you? You were into it. Yeah, I um, I mean, I'd seen Kit live a few times, and I'd listened to his tracks in passing, but I never actually sat down and listened to a record until we were sort of in prep for the interview with him. And his latest album, Dream Life of Debris again it's just in this top left hand corner here uh came out on dream ECM. life of debris <laughs> came out on ecm records uh last year Who, who's the name of the sax player he plays with jack and I? uh tom challenger tom challenger so there's a fair few uh collaborations with tom challenger on here and it's just it's just really beautiful music it's you know it to touch back on what will was saying you know when music's good it's good and you can't really exactly put your finger on what the uh the genre or the, you know, the scene that this sort of music belongs to, but it's just really beautiful atmospheric music that kind of takes you on a journey. And um, if you're, you know, if you're sort of lazing about the house or you really want to listen to something quite intently, it's it's perfect for, for both those scenarios. So yeah, check it out. Dream Life of Debris, Kit Downs. 
So there you go. Those are our records of yesterday and records of today. And uh, we want to thank you, Will, for joining us today. It's just thanks been, for uh, having it's me. Been a, you know, great, great pleasure to see you. And um, thanks, as you always, too. to Darcy O'Connor for uh, for keeping thanks, us online. Thanks, Darcy. Thanks, boys. Yeah. And of course, thank you to you for tuning in and for supporting us. Remember to subscribe to this channel and to check the link in the description below for our uh, Live at Five playlist and for the link to this stream every day. Um, tomorrow, we're joined by Ezra Collective drummer and a good friend of mine, uh, Femi Colioso. Uh, yeah. So be sure to tune in at five for that. And uh, until then, have a great day. We'll see you then. Good night. Thanks again for listening to Live at Five. Remember to subscribe to this channel and click on the link in the description to see where you can donate, sign up for a Smitty's membership, or buy our records and merch. See you tomorrow. Thanks again.